What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Stephen Sodic State. So, uh, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, yesterday, me and my boys, man, we jumped in the car. We went down to Salem, Oregon, because the Patriots were gathered there at the state capitol at 8 in the morning. Uh, as the legislative branch was having a kind of secret session, I suppose is what it was. And uh, the Patriots wanted access because uh, legislative session is open to the public according to uh, Oregon constitutional, right? What do you call it? Constitutional law? <laughs> Oregon constitutional, you know, the, the framework, right, of the state in accordance with the language that is that is penned and declared and stated in the, in the Oregon Constitution allows that these legislative sessions are therefore open to the public. So uh, I know there was a lady that had uh, some kind of legal briefs that she wanted to submit to the court. So it wasn't like we were just there to make a big ruckus. It wasn't just rabble rabble, right? This lady wanted to submit documents to the court for some purpose that I'm unaware of. But nonetheless, man, we were denied access at the front door by, you know, riot cops. Cause that's for some reason, for some reason, that's the way the, the state seems it finds it necessary to deal with the public is, is to present this wall of riot cops. Because of course, Patriots are at the Capitol to burn, steal and murder. Right. <laughs> right. I tell you what, uh, the, I think the most damage we caused was all of the, uh, the ground plants that we trampled underfoot. There was no graffiti. There was no uh, breaking of windows. There was no damaging the facility or the grounds in any manner of any kind. There was no damage incurred. Right? There were no rocks thrown at the cops. There was no bottles full of piss thrown at the cops. But I tell you what, man, the Patriots were incensed, were, were um, incensed against the militant line, the, the, the re seemingly image of despotism that the police uh, seem to be willing to am animate in their stand against the Patriots seeking to a access, uh, Oregon citizens seeking to access their legislative uh, building, their legislative building. The building doesn't belong to the governor. It doesn't belong to the legislators. It is the people's building. Anyway, man, nonetheless... So there was a lot of animosity, there was a lot of uh, anger against the despotic state. The nature of despotism is a creeping and crawling entity. It does not just, you know, arise from the boiling sea one terrible morning, you know, and march upon the city with fire and uh, destroy all that is good, right? That's not what despotism does, man. Despotism is a slow creep. Despotism inches its way into our society, slowly atomizing our relationships one to another, slowly dividing a nation in the sentiment of disenfranchisement for the people are set aside, as it were. The needs, the concerns, the issues of the people are marginalized against the growing power of the centralized state. You know, and it happens slowly and over time, in stages even. And we, no doubt, man, are in a stage, a stage on the way to a larger and larger and larger and more disrespectful government. But I would like to say this in particular. Because it's one thing to resist despotism, right? I think that we all, you know, depending on how you define despotism, you know, even Antifa imagines themselves railing against fascism, right? They imagine themselves the holding the line against fascism. Uh, strangely enough, they themselves acting the fascist all along. But that's a whole, that's, that's something for a, another video, is it not? But I tell you what. You know, there, there, there is a growing sentiment to, to, to resist the ever progressive march of despotism in our, in our civics, in our government, you know, and maybe it's the 12th hour and maybe it's, you know, too little, too late. 
But let me say this, that resisting despotism isn't just about, isn't just about confronting the face of despotism, isn't just about confronting the government, isn't just about confronting the cops. Because part of the face of despotism is the fracturing of our culture, the uh, the ruination, the ruination of our confidence, our confidence in the system, our confidence in civics, our confidence in the institutions, yea, even our confidence in the cops, right? Part of the creep of despotism is the shattering of our confidence in our nation. And you see it in that we have become a nation of factions. And we've always been, you know, a nation of factions because America has always been a, a, a nation of tolerance, a nation of, of, of different people, right? Working together, sharing, sharing the, the governance of our community, our society, one with another. But I tell you what, despotism is part of despotism is the fracturing of that confidence, the fracturing of those relationships, the fracturing of that community, because they need to divide us in order to conquer us. They need to first demoralize us in order to replace our, our unity as Americans. Let me say this. Part of resisting despotism is showing our fellow citizens the alternative of a demoralized people, an alternative to a fractured community. How do, how do we do that? We show them what freedom looks like. We show them what courage looks like. We show them what unity looks like. We stand, even not only that, but we forgive and we stand together. We forgive our fellow citizens that are divided against us. I'm not saying we go unite with Joe Biden. I'm not saying we go and unite with the Democratic caucus, the DNC, and their palette of, of snakes. I'm not saying we go unite with that. I'm not saying we yield and give up to it. But I'm saying that we find ways to connect with our citizens with whom we are divided. We find felt common ground with our citizens with whom we are divided. And we show them. We heal, in a sense, the rift by showing them that we also are people. We also have families. We also bleed red. We also bleed red. Keep in mind... That we can destroy as much by failing to build as those who actively wreck. Think about that. And that's the, that's the buried, I mean, that's the buried headline of this video. We can destroy as much by failing to build as those who actively wreck. We can be as destructive as Antifa and BLM by failing to build bridges in our communities, by failing to connect with our fellow citizens, by failing to represent something that is emboldening, encouraging. People, people ought to look at patriots and find encouragement, not terror. People ought to look to patriots and be like, man, those are people I want to be like, right? Right? It's like, it's like the hero's path. Everybody wants to be like the hero, man, because the hero is awesome. And we need to be an awesome people. So that those that are divided, so that those that are, that, you know, are on the other side, if you will, will look to us and be like, man, they're awesome. They're awesome. Be convicted in their hearts and recognize that, that we can be a courageous country. We can be united and yet have differing opinions. We can stand together. Anyway, man, that, that's my take. So, God bless you guys. Let me know what you think if you made it to the end of this video. Uh, comment what's going on. God bless. See you around.